game on Sunday, man. You, I know you're nervous for the Rams, but you got to be a little enthusiastic after being there. Bro, that, that game atmosphere was ridiculous. Like, energy, electricity. That place was rocking anyone was there. And a lot of the, a lot of the uh, Super Bug fans were there, too. Uh, Meat Bug. Tampa Tones. We are joined by Lee Goon tonight, uh, host of the Pat and Aaron Show of WDAE. Uh, Pat Donovan. Pat Donovan. And it sounds like Stunna is bumbling a little bit. Going to put him on mute for a second until that gets a little clear. But we're joined by Pat It looks Donovan. like Stunna is hanging out with Cheech and Chong in a car with the windows up or something over there. <laughs> it does look like you got a little No, bit my, my uh, camera's broke. Howdy, hi, howdy, ho, how the hell are you? Back like we never left, back like no one ever moved an inch, moved the thing. It's J-Lo Tampa Tones here on the Bucketeers, the great J-Lo, I should add, on a Sunday fun day here, and it's going to be a fun one for us as well, as we're glad you could join us here as we're turning and twisting our way through April, which means... We're approaching the NFL draft, and that will be here before we know it. We're approximately a week and a half away from the start of the draft at this point. JLo, it'll be here before you know it, and just like that, the offseason is pretty much in the midst of things coming down, slowing down a little bit. Post-draft, we'll only have schedule release and whatnot, so we're through the thick of the mud here, brother. We, we're almost to the finish line. We're almost to seeing football mini camps in the summer oh i'm stoked man it's like christmas man you're waiting for it to come around the corner man it's so exciting you know it, it, we're getting closer and closer to adding some new additions to the team core players i feel like it's, that's going to bring a lot of depth peace i mean it's a exciting time right now it's exciting indeed brother and happy sunday to you and the 813 i hope it's a beautiful one out there it's a great day over here in the 630 it's starting to feel like spring we do have a great boatload of things to get to we're going to talk about here in the program of course our month-long mock coverage continues today we got guests in front of the show's juice on tap texting in the text line he already submitted the bears pick obviously he has options but We're going to get to our mock draft, month-long madness, and so much more. We're going to briefly talk UFL Week 3 coming up this weekend, uh, or what's going on over there. And we got some spring college showdowns going on. We got a whole plethora of stuff. And Baker Mayfield's big offseason continues, and we'll talk about that to kind of settle Bucks talk in a little bit. J-Lo, first and foremost, Baker Mayfield, it's his birthday today. He had a child not too far back, a couple days back within the past week. Got the bag this offseason. He's living the dream here since he's arrived to the Bay, it seems. Well deserved, man. He went through a lot of a lot of drama, some episodes, man. Oh, you know, going for Odell that. Beckham orchestrated episodes. <laughs> but let's just say He's, you know, he's getting everything good that's coming to him. You know, you know, it's hard, it's hard to overcome those, you know, those issues he went through with certain teams, and then he gets finally lands here, gambles on himself, and he, hey, he's a winner, man. He end up getting the playoffs, getting the bag, having a beautiful child. I, I believe he had a daughter. I think, I think he did have a daughter, daughter. and sure. as you alluded to, the guy's a winner, right? He won at Oklahoma. He won in Cleveland, although they didn't win the Super Bowl. That man brought them their first regular season win in forever. I remember that Thursday night game when Baker Mayfield stepped in. Hugh Jackson was coaching over in Cleveland at the time. They had Tyrod Taylor running the ship and at halftime or near halftime. Hugh Jackson made the decision to put in Baker Mayfield. Cleveland ended up winning that game and the whole city of Cleveland got free beer. I believe it was Budweiser, Bud Light. I could be mistaken, but nonetheless, he was winning there. He won their playoff game, their first playoff game in forever in Cleveland as well. So he won in college. He won at Cleveland. Obviously, Carolina, not so much. But Los Angeles, St. Louis, whatever the hell you want to call the Rams, 
He stepped in there on short week's notice and won a Thursday night football game subbing in. Now he won with the Bucks last year, making it to the playoffs, and surely he's winning this offseason, having a kid, getting a big payday. And getting to see Baker enjoy this life is incredible because, as you alluded to, J-Lo, he's just been through some ups, some downs, and he's a perfect example of a football career, athlete career, or just any profession in general. When times seem bad, just keep chugging. You never know what arrives. Look at what Baker Mayfield did. He bet on himself last year. Obviously, four, four and a half million, still a pretty penny to Joes like you and I, but to a guy like <laughs> him, that ain't squat. And then he turned it into, you know, triple, quadruple, 10 times his salary just this season alone. So incredible stuff on Baker this offseason. And uh, you never know, J-Lo, he might get new toys coming in the draft shortly, too. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I can think of so many prospects in my head. You know, we've been talking about this off the pod. You know, there's so many additions they can add to this team just to make him even better. I mean, the sky's the limit for this man. I feel like he's going to help us win. Might be jumping a little too Simon, but I think he can win. As a what position step. would you like to see them draft offensively to help Baker out? Would it be O-line, wide receiver? Where would you like the Bucks to go, and what round would that be? I mean, wide receiver should be second round, I think. There's so much talent in the receiving room. Um, interior lineman is very big. I think they need to protect more of the middle with Baker. Because when Baker's pressure, man, he can't be taking those hits all day, man. You know, he got he took a he took a beating here and there because, you know, the O line was just inconsistent at times, you know, and then they switched guards. So, you know, give me a lineman the first round, possibly. There's a couple of them we've been talking about and we we've, we've been hearing about, but there's a good chance you may go edge. It just depends who lands there. That's where I think would be the top choice if one of those two guys fall, but I don't think it's gonna happen. But yeah, you get you give me a receiver in the second round, third round, you go get that interior guard. And there's some small school guys, you know, Jason Lane likes to go pick and put them right there in the middle, you know. So I think we would definitely, we'll definitely get a lineman, a receiver, and an edge the first three rounds, and maybe a corner with that second, third round pick if we don't trade up, which I don't think we're going to do that. You never know. Yeah, I don't think we'll trade up though either. Jason Light's rarely done it. The one time I remember him doing it in round one. It was only a pick or two, and we got Tristan Wirth, so it did work out well the time he did it, but I don't envision it this year unless there's some prospect that's dr- jumping off the screen at the Bucks front office, which, again, I don't see. One thing I do see, the Bucks lay in the weeds, and a lot of these names you're hearing rumored to the Bucks now probably aren't their guys, to be quite honest with you. It seems like year in and year out, J-Lo, all the mock draft rumors and names you hear tied to the Bucks. They end up going a different direction, whether it's because a player falls to them or whether they trade back and want to accumulate some picks. It just so happens to be like that. I remember the year we drafted Logan Hall, the year we drafted Kalijah Cansey, the year we drafted JTS. Barely seen any mocks having us land any of those guys with their first round pick. So I remember with Lo- in, Yo- in Logan Hall's year, it was that UConn defense lineman getting rumored to go to the Bucks a lot of the time. Or, you know, um, the other D linemen around the league, not Logan Hall really. Last season, Kalijah Cansey was not even scheduled to have a top 30 visit with the Bucks. He even said, you know, I met with them briefly, but, you know, nothing crazy. So, J Lo, the names, the smoke screens, the rumors, as Olive joins, rumors are always fake news. Not always, but 90% of the time, this time of year, <laughs> smoke screen season is upon us. What say you on all that, J Lo? Oh, yeah. Small screen. It wouldn't surprise me if Jason Light just hits all of us with a curveball and just pits the most random play we would not expect to happen. Like, Peter Report, you know, they, they, did, they did a mock. You know, they brought that tackle in the first round. I think I saw from Oklahoma. I don't see how, why they would take him, especially in the first round, because he would not get on the field. And, and a six-foot eight guy playing guard, it's nice, but when you got a six-foot one quarterback or six foot however tall baker is i think he's gonna have a hard time seeing over him get him a step ladder back there then huh it oh yeah no definitely i mean i mean hope i I just don't think it it wouldn't be a good pick but i'm not gonna judge that you know peter ford does great work you know appreciate all the info they bring in but anyway you never know and you never know who we can go get and that's the best part about it you know we all like surprises don't we (laughs) we like 
you know, we see a pick That's coming. That's the part about the draft. I remember watching, I think the video was posted yesterday or the day before by our buddies over at Real Bucks Talk, led by Michael Plesko. Check them out. I'm sure many of you, if not all of you, have heard or know of them already. But they put out a tweet last year. They had our own bucketeer, Gene, on their program. They had Kenny Barrett, formerly with the Buck What You Heard podcast, and they had them to host over there, uh, Mike and um, his partner as well. And they had their draft reaction round one live. And you could just tell by all the faces and everything that Kalija Kansi was not <laughs> a rumored name to be had. Christopher, morning, brother. Thanks for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have the great Christopher Cole in the house. But JLo, that's the great thing about the draft. And you'll be in town for it. And we do our day three draft coverage for this exact reason. I love just getting to enjoy day one, enjoy night two, um, kind of break down the picks, get the picks as they come, kind of study a little tape on these guys as the picks come in. You know, that Thursday, mainly that Friday, but, you know, a little bit break down some YouTube videos of their college film and stuff like that. So I remember doing that with Cansey last year. Cansey was crazy. His reaction time to running back screen passes at Pittsburgh, I was – Big fan of the Cansey pick right after we made it. I did the same with Yaya Diaby. But we go live day three. We soak in day one and two. But nonetheless, very excited for the draft, J-Lo. I think it's going to be more unpredictable this year than we've witnessed in quite some time. And even last year was pretty unpredictable. Not for the Bucks, but not only for the Bucks, I should say. But for a lot of teams, Anthony Richardson going to the Colts. I remember a lot of media heads. Had Will Levis penciled in there. You might never know what happened, J-Lo, in the NFL draft. That's why the other day, when we did our draft and Cujo, the wrestler, picked uh, Keon Coleman, that could be a possibility because you never know. And I think that's really what brings all the excitement and the attention into the NFL draft. No, agreed. I mean, you never know who, who could be picked. I mean, Keon Coleman could be uh, the receiver taking over. You know, it just depends. It all depends what the team wants, what the general manager believes in. You know, and sometimes these general managers don't make the best choice, and they make these Raiders. Hits. Oh, God. Man, I don't even want to go get to with the Raiders, but. Henry Ruggs. Henry Ruggs, I mean. And he was the first wide receiver taken that draft. It was mind-boggling. Because he was supposed to be the fourth or fifth. That was the same draft with Michael Pittman and. Not that he, not that LaVisca Chenault turned into much, but he was rumored to go ahead of uh, uh, Henry Ruggs at the time. You know, a lot of wide receivers at the time were rumored to go ahead of Henry Ruggs, and that just goes to show maybe a guy like Keon Coleman does surpass a guy like Roman Dunze out there. And, and like I said, there's so much talent. You can't go wrong picking any of them. Keon Coleman's a playmaker. So is um, Adunze. He's another playmaker. I mean, if, if the Giants were to take Keon Coleman, good for them. You know, ho- hopefully it'll be good for it'll be good for their quarterback because you know they're paying him a lot of money and they gotta give him some weapons. You know, get somebody to, you know throw the ball to. So you know, you never know. He may he may go, he may not. But at the end of the day, that's what's exciting about it. You'll see a random pick, and then you kind of go and you do your little nerd thing. You look into it, look at their stats. You know, especially with the day three pits. You know. Players we don't even know, never heard of, like Sean Murphy Bunny, no disrespect. But when he got drafted, I went greedy. He was a day and, two pick, though. Yeah, but I'm saying but day two pick. What I mean is, you know, a random name that I didn't even study or even watch. And then I looked him up. I'm like, oh, okay, Sean Bunting. Okay. You know, so. Yeah, like that's said, when he was Sean Bunting. Remember, he added the mur- – or he, uh, was he Sean – yeah, he added the Sean Murphy later. Yes, and he was a Chippewa, Central Michigan guy, and really Maction has some eyes on it, but not a lot of the general public, obviously me, because I live in the middle over here with the Maction. (laughs) Speaking of living in the middle, we got some of our great brothers joining the program in the middle of it. We got Neil L. What it do? What it do to our guy, Neil? Neil's always a pleasure, and since we got Neil here, I'm going to have to speak his words into existence for our friend. As Neil always says, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and turn that notification bell on for the Bucketeers podcast. Help us help you. You'll be notified anytime we go live, and we always go live when it's a good time to talk Bucks football, like this beautiful Sunday 
we have in our hands, and Neil says facts. So thank you very much, Neil. And our favorite Canadian joins as well, Pepin Stepin in the house. We go more than the USA, folks. Yes, we do. Um, J-Lo, we got a great day of football, though, because we're talking football. You got UFL football. We got our mock draft continuing today. Real quick, just to catch everyone up, not that we're going to do our mock just yet, but um, go through picks one through six we have completed so far. We have Bears. Juice chose for the Bears first overall. He went Caleb Williams. Uh, the command this podcast chose for the commando second overall. They ended up going with Drake May. There were three of them on. Two of them went May. One of them went Jaden Daniels. And by the way, if you missed any of these episodes, they are available on YouTube. Apple, Spotify, and so much more. But So when Caleb Williams, Drake May, number three, the great J.C. Allen chose for the Patriots, being a Boston Natives guy. He went Jaden Daniels, a great friend from Sports Illustrated. Number four, fantasy expert James Mudo texted into the program and went with Marvin Harrison Jr. So that's a fun pick there. That's a really good one. He's an elite talent to say the least, his dad, one of the best wide receivers I've ever seen. Number five, no surprise here. Harbaugh gets into town. What does Harbaugh do? See you later, Mike Williams. See you later, Keenan Allen. Well, now he's left with Justin Herbert and all that and a bag of chips at the wide receiver position. Quentin Johnson's been a bust for him. So surely they're going to draft the wide receiver there. And we had the Chargers taking Malik Neighbors with the fifth overall pick. And that was our celebrity guest pick from Walter Football's mock draft on the great Cujo, the professional wrestler on the independent circuit, joined us, lifelong Giants fan for the sixth overall pick, and he had the Giants taking Keon Coleman. He was between him and, surprise, surprise, Michael Penix ultimately going Keon Coleman. I think that's too early for Penix. I think he might creep his way into the first round back end of it, but J-Lo, Coming up today, we got 7, 8, 9, 10. I know you you have the Titans at 7. I'm going to do Atlanta at 8. We got Juice from ONTAP Sports texting in the Chicago Bears pick live on the program at 9. And then if we're lucky, we'll get Hunch out for 10. If not, we'll delay that to the next show because he said he might be joining us later and he's in charge of the Jets. So, again, these are great times to get great guests. And although he can't be here live with us, things happen, shit comes up. We do have the great juice from the Bears on tap, texting in the Bears pick. But J-Lo, before we get to draft talk, as Bucks Rays Bolt says, hello, hello, Bucks Rays Bolt. Let's bring the Rays a win today. They could use it. Got embarrassed a little bit yesterday. But, um, you know, they're playing pretty good baseball for the fact that they've been put in with all these injuries. It's been terrible. I don't know if any team could. And the bats are terrible. The bats are well, not you know, when your franchise player goes down, your best hitter goes down, your prominent player goes down, your biggest contract in year after year, and the center of the franchise, Wander Franco, goes down, it's never a great thing. Obviously, innocent till proven guilty, but not looking great for the great Wander down in the Dominican. And I wouldn't be surprised if we might not see him in not only Tampa again, but in the major leagues again. So... Um, you know, that really hurt the Rays, but from Rays to other Tampa things to other sports, we got the UFL on today, J-Lo. Week three of the UFL, as you got your Tampa sports shirt on over there. Tampa used to have a couple UFL teams, technically. We had the Vipers of the XFL. We had the Bandits of the USFL. Now we have no UFL teams, but we all claimed our own team. You have the Battle Hawks with Anthony Beck, former Buck. How are they looking? How are they doing heading into week three? And uh, what's their weekend looking like? It's looking pretty good. They're they're one and one. They won they won by a field goal last week. It's looking like all these games are coming down to the wire to field goals. I like, I think. One oh. team... <laughs> but for the most part, they're look they're looking pretty sharp, you know. And I like and you know you like close games, you know. I, I'm a big a I'm a big AJ believer. I think I think he's a very you know good leadership in the locker room. Hopefully he'll be able to get, get the ball rolling and win some games. Yeah, I agree. And we'll see one and one. And we got UFL on today is Bucks raise bolts, obviously an all around Tampa fan says, 
lightning ready for the playoffs. Hell yeah, we are. And oh, Frank's late to talk about them as we got the great WQEE joining on Facebook. Thanks for joining the show, WQEE. They're a live station based out of Atlanta. So cool to see them tuning into the program. But Bucks Rays Bolt says Tampa Bay Lightning ready for the playoffs. And two things. Anytime your coach is named John Cooper, you're going to be ready for the fucking playoffs. So <laughs> that's that. And then another beautiful thing is this team's led by many veterans who have not only been there and done that, but they made some great deadline acquisitions to get fresh blood into the ice where – at points in time this year, J Lo, is Pep and Steppen loses some brownie points here. Go Blue Jays, go Leafs. Yeah. Get ah. here. Man, you know, I'll let you slide with Blue Jays, but the Leafs. Uh, uh. But J Lo, um, nonetheless, today we do have some more UFL. See, that's what's great about the Bucketeers. You come on here, we welcome all sports talk. Sure, we were not going to talk all day about it, but. We're not ne- going to neglect you. I see other Bucks podcasts and they get comp. This is a Bucks podcast. Yeah. So what? You could still talk other sports. Who really cares? But to go over, my DC Defenders won yesterday, J Lo. They did beat the Renegades 29 to 28. That was a fun matchup over there. So the Defenders ended up winning yesterday's game against the Renegades. And then. The Stallions ended up beating the Showboats yesterday, 33-14. to 14. Underway right now, kickoff, Roughnecks and Panthers. That game's on ABC. That game just kicked off over on ABC. And then, as you said, the Battlehawks and the Brahmas. I think Gene's a Brahma, right? They play later today. So uh, my D.C. defenders are 2-1. and one. I'll take that. Uh, your Battle Hawks are one and one. Gene is two and zero oh with his Brahmas. I well, forget. About to go two and one. B- I think. I think Stano went with Houston or Arlington. I think. I think he went with Birmingham or Birmingham. Then he's yeah. three and zero. Oh. If yeah. he went, yeah, because who's Lou Holtz coach, and that's who Stano went with. Bur- Birmingham. Or Skip Holtz. I'm sorry, not Lou yeah. Holtz. Yeah, yeah, Bur- Birmingham. That's where Skip Holtz is at. So that's they, where Stunner went. Man, could you imagine if Lou Holtz is coaching? <laughs> oh, God. Poor guy have a damn stroke on the field, man. Oh, my God. Because I'm telling you, I mean, it would, it, 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 it would be so funny but so messed up to see that man trying to yell at the players on the field, and then he probably might fall and trip, God bless him. <laughs> but, but, I mean, you know, he, he's a legendary coach, but, no, nah, there's no need for him to come back. He, he can just enjoy talking football, going to campuses, doing speeches and stuff. Just- That's what's cool about the UFL, though. Not only for the players, you do hear a lot of fun names circulating as well. I remember Heinz Ward was a head coach for a little bit. Wade Phillips is the head coach of the Brahmas, and that's another guy, J-Lo. You would think Wade Phillips is long gone by now. He's 76. He's hanging in there, as Christopher Cole says, Champa Bay. Bucks Rays Bolts says Baker's birthday today. Yes, sir, Bucks Rays Bolts. We talked about that a little bit, so kudos to Baker turning 29 i believe yep you say it as well 29 but still a young guy and kind of crazy to think about me and baker are the same age only you know you look at these guys on the field and you just assume since they're larger than life figures that they're older and whatnot but man scary reality when half the league's younger than me nowadays out there it's like holy shit man and that goes (laughs) for every sport i mean that's what's crazy about college and speaking of college J-Lo, orange and blue game, Florida, they squared off yesterday. We talked UFL, we'll talk college quickly, then we'll get into the NFL draft. How'd that go, orange and blue game? And um, any exciting prospects, obviously not in the canon this year for the Bucks because they're playing in college. But down the road in the orange and blue game, you see any excitement for the Bucks down the road in perhaps 2025, 2026 NFL draft? I mean, there's some prospects out there. Um, Trey Wilson, wide receiver, he's wide receiver one as of now. He's a very good speedster, can, you know, can can get get his, you know, breakaway one-on-ones. He'll, he'll be fun to watch. He probably won't declare after this coming season, but 26th, you can look for him. Graham Burtz is very underrated. You know, he looks very sharp out there. He's a good – he's another one, a great leader in the locker room. The players get behind him, and that's what you want in a quarterback who has – the play the players back and all that stuff. Um, there's another dude I really like, but he's gonna be a true freshman, LJ McCray. That dude's a beast. 
top he was one of the top D linemen recruited. And this man's gonna be fun to watch. Like he's gonna see a lot of playing time as a freshman for sure. And of course DJ Lagway, he's gonna he's gonna do big things. I think he's gonna be our next like big name quarterback, like Tim TLC Spurrier type stuff. I know. Hi. You say we hi got our Paul? favorite bucketeer in the house. Say hi. Say hi, Gracie. Gracie. <laughs> Gracie, do me a favor. Do this for Tones. You'll love this. Ready? Say, go Bucks. Go Bucks. Hey, there we go. That's our youngest bucketeer, Gracie, making her way onto the program. Always fun to have the great co-host. We'll consider her an honorary co-host. Uh, oh. oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I know. She I know, and it's fun. You're on live. Go say, say Tampa <laughs> Bay. And speaking <laughs> of Tampa Bay, we're not picking for still 20 more picks at our mock, J Lo. So we got quite a ways to go. But today we do have the Titans, the Falcons, the Bears, and the Jets. Potentially, is it seems like Tony Khan's in the house. Hey guys, Tony here. So excited for the draft. Keep grinding. Thank you, Tony Khan. We love you, Tony the Great. Um, he's an entertaining guy, to say the least. NFL draft, fun watch this year. What year isn't the NFL draft a fun watch? When is the NFL draft not fun? Not being mean, but what year have you said, hey, I'm not going to have fun during the NFL draft? I've never heard anyone not look forward. Maybe if your team didn't have a first, second, third, fourth, you know, Maybe if they didn't have any picks or something. Uh, think Texas at, huh? DT. Oh, oh, DT, I'm sorry. Um, You know, maybe, I don't know, because I could see a smart team like the 49ers or Kansas City picking them up at pick 31 or 32 just because, you know, some wanky things happen. He might fall a little bit. Or even the Ravens at 30. You know, there's a lot of smart programs in the back end of the draft, back end of the first round, I should say, picking – and I, I could see him going to one of those. J-Lo, what say you? Um, as far as he goes, he, he definitely will. I think he would land at pit 26. I wouldn't mind him. Honestly, he's like another Kalaja Kansi. You know, you can put him on the other side of the D-line over Logan Hall. And you put and you put that speed, you get faster on getting pressure to the quarterback. That's what I like about him. But honestly, I think I could see him go with the 49ers because he ended up um, they ended up releasing um, Armstead, I think, Tarek Armstead. That was one of their star D linemen. Mm -hmm. So he would be filling in as a good replacement. He's a good talent. He's definitely I don't think he's gonna fall in the second round though. He's definitely gonna go first round. And then there's a, and then he's not talking about him. There's another D tackle named Sweat. I believe he's like bid six four. When in doubt, draft the Sweat. <laughs> But well, the thing with him is he got DWI not too long ago. Yes. So, he, so he's going to fall. So I hope he's not talking about him because I, I don't want him the second round. He's going to fall to the third or fourth easily now because of the trouble he got into. Hey, but, and maybe that'll be a bright spot. Maybe this is a learning curve for him. You hate the young pup to get in trouble, but he does it to himself. But you never know what might happen. I mean, look at Warren Sapp. I remember he was – proclaimed to fall on draft day he fell right into our labs not comparing this guy to sap by any means but mm -hmm. you never know um cleveland me says i know the bucks draft pick on the show isn't happening yet jlo you alluded to it a little bit earlier where you might want to go if uh you could just circle back quickly where you maybe want to go in round one i'd prefer to go edge if we can because i keep telling people this we don't have an elite edge we have an elite corner we have Jamel Dean. We have elite offense alignment. We have worse. We have, you know, a couple. Godecki's not elite yet, but he's making his way there. So, you know, we got some eliteness on the O line. We have elite wide receivers. We have a good quarterback, a good running back room, a good young tight end room, um, some elite D linemen with Vita Vea, Kalijah Kansi, and those type elite safety play with Winfield, elite special teamers with Jake Camarda, and the great. Um, you know, everybody forgets to put the money sign in Chase's name. You got to remember when you type out Chase, put the money symbol instead of the yes, because Chase was money last year. So respect that, man. <laughs> but it makes only sense for us to go one route, in my opinion, edge. We don't have an elite edge, J-Lo. We have a bunch of good edges, number two, number three, number four edges. Nothing against those guys. Randy Gregory, very excited for him. He could have a great year. 
Yaya Diaby, very excited for him. I could be wrong as all hell. He could be a 20-sack-a-year guy, but I view him as a very good edge guy, about a 9- to 12-sack-a-year guy with a high motor. Nothing against him. Very fun player. Anthony Nelson, he's a nice little edge guy, but he's not nowhere near elite. Nothing against him. You know, we have a lot of good core depth pieces. Even JT has very nice depth piece, but not elite. To me, J-Lo, we got to take that crack at an edge. If Luta falls from UCLA, that would be a blessing in disguise. I don't think he's going to. But to me, I think based on the Bucks' history as well, look at the past three years. 2021, JTS round one. 2022, our first pick was used on Logan Hall. 2023, Kalijah Kansi, Todd Bowles and Jason Light go defense often. And not only defense, they go for the big boy quite often. Give me an edge. No, I agree. Sorry yeah. to interrupt your little coffee break there. Oh, no, no, you're good. You're good, man. No, you're good. I love talking draft talk, man. But um, Latu, I would love to have that guy on there, but I don't think he's going to fall unless we trade up. And I don't see Light giving away pits for him. Um, Jared Verse is another name I really like. You know, but I, like I said, he's another guy that's going to be gone. I just don't see these two falling. Um, Chop Robinson, he's a big question mark. I think he's a playmaker. You know, he'll get after the quarterback, create pressure. You know, but he's like a a trial a trial type guy. You know, kind of like JTS, seeing what you got out of him. You know, some some fans aren't too happy about it. But I mean, you're a Penn State guy. You tell me what, what do you feel about Chop Robinson? He has elite potential. He has elite physical traits and ability. And it'll depend if he, it's up to him. Does he want to take his game to the next level? I think he surely can be a top edge in the game. He has the traits and abilities too. And I will say this as well. Usually Penn Staters are really good at the pro level. James Franklin doesn't do great at getting the most of him in college, but he does do good at preparing him for the next level. And I think they're doing just that with Chop Robinson. And I think, Chop ends up being a nice pro, a good pro. Obviously, Verse is going to go in the top. Turner is going to go in the top. Latu is in that position where if enough O-linemen and wide receivers and QBs get drafted, maybe Latu falls. But if not, you're looking at a Chop Robinson or maybe another guy if you do trade back. And one guy I like is out of Penn State as well, but he's more of a mid-round card. Adisa Isaac, he's a big six foot four, two hundred forty nine pound defense alignment, and I know I'm sitting here pounding my chest saying I would take an edge round one, but I'm not going to be too mad if we do go elsewhere other than edge. But if we don't go edge round one, I want Adisa Isaac in the mid rounds from Penn State. I think he would be an awesome pick, and I think he'd be a very good gamble and another guy i'd look for in the mid rounds if we don't get that elite edge rusher with some nice size as well would be a braylon trice from washington six foot four uh 274 pounds as well so um i think some of those edges if you don't get one round one there's still your options later in the draft between a trice between isaac and then you could really really end up waiting if you do and end up going like a Cedric Johnson or Xavier Thomas type way back in the draft from Clemson or Missouri if you want that good veteran presence still. So edge isn't really deep nor top heavy, but there are some options out there just much like every draft. You know, you're kind of throwing darts at the board here and hoping they stick J-Lo. Nothing is really certain here. But Bucks Rays Bolt says, um, do you think we trade up? We addressed that earlier. We said no. One talking about Sweck may go round one. You never know where he might go. Yaya is elite. Um, he might be, but right now you can't consider him elite, sadly. Um, and that's not no disrespect on Yaya, but J Lo kind of hard to consider him elite right now. It's too early to tell. I think he's a good contributor. I think he's I think he's got a lot of growing coming his way. I went, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't say he's elite, but I think he's a good contributor and role player as far as that goes if that makes any sense a role player for now could develop into an elite rusher but it's too early to tell right now i think right i think right now i'm just thankful we have him i think he's a great run stopper i like his attitude you know i mean he's a great locker room guy you gotta have that in there as well 
but adding Randy Gregory can maybe help him a little bit, show him a few things to help him, you know, best his potential. Cause he does have a lot of potential to be great. Yeah, and he says Parson compared Chop from Penn State. Well, they're around the same build. They're around the same figure, but it's hard to compare anyone to Micah Parsons. You know, if you could get half the player out of Micah Parsons, out of Chop Robinson, I think you'd be a happy camper. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> you know, because Micah Parsons is elite. He's next level. He's a defensive magic mind, the Swiss Army knife out there. You could put him at edge. You could put him at middle linebacker. You could put him at defensive end if you needed to Micah Parsons so yeah um you could compare their physical traits and attributes chop and Parsons but you know if they got him that'd be something we better draft Kool-Aid no I'm okay on round one corner I don't want a corner round one I'm gonna be quite honest with you we signed two cornerbacks we drafted Zion McCollum we drafted Josh Hayes we're giving Jamel Dean good money I'm sorry no thank you I'm absolutely out on cornerback round one. That would probably be the thing that, you know, moves to the end of me. We don't need one at all in round one. And Jason Light has had marvelous success. Why would you draft the corner round one? Carlton Davis, not round one. Jamel Dean, not round one. Sean Murphy Bunting, not round one. I know he's not. Yeah, exactly. And I'm getting there. Exactly. Zion, Josh Hayes. Antoine Winfield, I know he's not a corner, not round one. Uh, Jordan Whitehead, not round one. Mike Edwards, not round one. All of these defensive backs were integral parts to either playoff runs or Super Bowl runs on this roster, and none of them were round one. I will never, ever sign up for taking a cornerback round one in this Jason Light regime. Uh, the man just knows what he's doing in the mid-rounds at defensive back, j -Lo. I mean, look at the past corn we got in the first round. Bernard Hargraves didn't work out. Aki Tlaib got traded, didn't work out. I mean, I just don't see Kula McKinstry. I mean, I think he's a good corner, don't get me wrong. But I think, honestly, you got to go in the trenches. You got to go trenches first round, whether it's O-line or D-line, one of those two, because the trenches come first or the first ones, you know, the – start the blocking, start the play. You know, I think I'm fine with the cornerback room we have. It wouldn't hurt to maybe drop one later, like in the sixth Oh, round yeah. I, I want one on either, you know, as early as round three, preferably not. But I wouldn't mind one on late day two or day three at all. Mm -mm, no. You, 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 want, you want to go in the trenches those first couple of rounds, maybe get a receiver. You want to go ahead and, and get another receiver in the room. Because there's so many of them, you can go in the second or third round. But I think the first round is going to be trenches. It's either in, it's either going to be interior offensive line or it's going to be edge. And remember, and we have Christian Izian who could play corner as well. And um, he play safety. Yeah, and he'll probably play a little more corner. Maybe he'll play some nickel this year. You never know because uh, Izian is now going to be the third safety. Maybe you know so. If, if they want to keep him on the field, j -Lo, you might see a guy like Izzy in a more cornerback packages. I just think after signing the guys we sign and with our uh, youthness at corner already, that pick is better off being made in the later rounds. Well, for example, I would take Chop Robinson over Cooley McKinstry because he's an edge. He'll probably be the best available guy there. Could be a project guy, but – you know, you can't go wrong with a Penn State player on defense. I think they produce really good defensive players. I'll be totally okay with Chop Robinson. That's what. That's where I'm leaning toward the pick where who we're gonna pick because the other names I could think of, which we'll talk another time on, may not be there. But Cool McKinstry, I don't see him coming here. I don't see us taking a corner to probably the third, maybe the third round, the the you know the earliest. Because there are some good talents in the cornerback room as well that you can bring in and develop. And and Todd Bowles ain't afraid to put an undrafted rookie out there to, to play. He ain't. And he and the thing about Todd Bowles, I know we're getting a little off topic here. He is one of the best guys at creating different packages on defense to where you can see Izzy come in at safety. You can see Jordan Whitehead maybe surprising people going into slot because he's a great tackler. You never know, and that's what I like about what Light did this all season. He brought more depth in because Dean, you know, he had he does have problems staying healthy the whole season, 
So if he goes down, then that's man up, which would be um, Brees Hall. Bryce, Bryce, Bryce Hall. Bryce Hall. Bryce, hey, if we have Brees and Bryce, sign me up. But no, we got Bryce. Oh, God, yeah. yes. <laughs> anyway. And we have Tavair Thomas as well. So, you know, between Jamel Dean, Tavair Thomas, uh, Bryce Hall, Zion McCollum, Josh Hayes, that's a thing. I don't know, you know, for taking a corner round one, if you're taking anyone round one, you want to try and make sure you give him a path to being on the field. That's some tough competition. And uh, we didn't even mention Christian Izzy. And so you never know. Pops does text in and say, hey, he'd want O-line followed by edge um, and then a wide receiver and cornerback in day two potentially or day three. So he says in the first four rounds, we should go O-line, edge, wide receiver, corner. Hard to argue there. Maybe a running back sneaks in to take um, Edmonds' position eventually. But one thing I hope we don't draft this year, JLo, and nothing against it, I'm okay on drafting a tight end. We've been doing it a couple times the past couple of years. I mean, look at how young our tight ends are. K-Dotton, Co'Keefe, Payne Durham. You know, we have enough youth movement at the tight end position. So, Yeah, Payne, Payne Durham, I like him a lot. You know, he was a rookie last year. I think he's got a great potential. <clears throat> excuse me, great potential to get on the field more this this season, and I think Jason Light is comfortable with that. I think Liam Cohen is comfortable with that. Going with those two tight ends, <clears throat> the only thing about Kade Odden is he's got to block better. He's got to be mm-hmm. able to take on the block, bulk up, create more spaces. That's like the biggest thing about Kade Odden. He's a hell of a playmaker. You know, I love Kade Odden. That's the only thing. I think when it comes to tight end, they need to go get like a real blocking tight end. And there are some out there in the later rounds you could go get that can be just for blocking, making little catches here and there in the red zone. But Payne Durham, I'm fine with him being tight end too. I'm totally okay with that. You know, if they want to add a veteran, they can, or they can go draft one. There's, like I said, there's, there's some good ones out there. Yeah, we'll see what happens. But, you know, our youth tight end room I like. I would not trade up for Brock Bowers. I'm sorry. He's going to go high. He's going to go up there. And when you mix him in, that means you're just waste, you're admitting to wasting picks in years past on tight ends. No, thank you. I don't want to give up the draft assets to go up and get a guy. I'm sorry. Um, we need all the youth movement we could get right now. Speaking of youth movement, J-Lo, you're on the clock at 7 at Tennessee. You know where you're going, brother. Let's chime the draft music, then we'll be joined by Gene, I see here briefly, as we're doing our draft, but let's get the music rolling. J-Lo, give us your Tennessee Titans 2024 NFL Draft selection, seventh overall. Where are you going, J-Lo, with the Titans pick? So after careful consideration, looking into the Titans roster, what they need, they could use another playmaking receiver by the tight end and brought Bowers or a receiver in Roman Dunze. But I'm going to go in the trenches. With that being said, with the seventh pick overall, the Tennessee Titans to let Joe Alt tackle Notre Dame. The big golden domer and Joe Alt is one of the best, if not the best tackles available in the he, draft this year. And he is. And, he and, and you know, you got to protect the blind side of Will Levis to give him time. They added wide receiver Calvin Ridley into the receiver room with D-Hop. So now you get Joe All at left tackle to protect Will Levis' blind side. You know, so and I think it's I think it's what's best for the Titans right now. You know, you gotta protect your quarterback. And what do you do? You go get the best tackle in the draft on the left side, and then you just go get another playmaking receiver later on in the second and third round. So that's why I felt he was the best for that spot and he was my pick. I like that a lot. Speaking of liking a lot, I think we got the great Gene from Buck What You Heard in the building now. Gene, Gene how are you? If you are there, brother, thanks yep. for joining us. Not sure how long we have you, but thanks for stopping by. Man, sorry I'm late. Uh, I definitely want to come in and support the show, man. Great content so far. Um, as you guys know, I'm a draft idiot, so I just kind of follow along with, with <laughs> what's being said, man. I, I – I'm as, about as good a talent evaluator as Mark Dominic. So, you know, that's mm-hmm. about where it's about where my talents are. So <laughs> I'm glad to get in here and listen to you guys. Hey, I you think smell that... what the gene is cooking. 
the head of the table, Mr. Gene. But, you know, I think that's all of us. It's fun stuff, you know. It's like throwing darts at a board and seeing where it lands for the NFL draft. But I do like the Titans pick by J-Lo. We'll be making the Falcons pick here a little later. And then we do have – I do June. have one. I did yeah, have go one ahead, question. Gene. I did have one question. Um, with – Basically, I, I would say that the, the Titans are in rebuild mode. Uh, how do you replace a Derrick Henry? I mean, theor- I mean, realistically, is this going to be a running back by duo? Is this something that if there, if there is potentially a good running back there, do you – I know you don't want to – I've always been of the philosophy you don't draft a running back in the first round. I think that's, that's kind of pointless considering all the late-round success that we see around the league. Um what do you think? Uh, I understand in O line you want to you want to keep your uh, your quarterback upright, which is a great pick, by the way. Um, is it possible that you you look at an offensive weapon uh, with that pick if it's if it's right there to you for you? Yeah, and that's interesting. Replacing Derrick Henry not going to be easy. It's going to be weird seeing them without Derrick Henry, to be honest with you. But I think the Titans. Uh, I think they ultimately do draft a running back, but I don't believe they're going to round one. I think J-Lo alluded to it as well. They might go offensive playmaker, wide receiver, tight end, but running back for them, I firmly believe, and I could be dead wrong here, but I think they like Tajay Spears a lot. They're a backup running back to Derrick Henry Mm -hmm. last year. He was a little scrap back, kind of more their third down back. And then Mm -hmm. they did bring in Tony Pollard. I think they signed him to a one or two year, nothing too long term. So kind of a short term fix there. But between Spears and Pollard, I think they'll go that direction. And then I do think they'll probably draft one around five, six or so. Because Hassan Haskins, Julian Chestnut, to me, neither of those guys are probably a good third string running back. Nothing against him. But I could see them going with the running back more so later in the draft. But I think they lay off round one with Tony Pollard and Tajay Spears there, Jayla. What say you? No, agreed. I mean, I think Tajay Spears will be a good role running back for them. Obviously, Pollard's going to be the starter. Um, they might take a running back maybe in the third or fourth round because there's going to be some out there. It wouldn't surprise me because you never can't have enough running bats in the room. And Pollard, you know, he's up and down with injuries, so we don't know how he's going to pan out as far as that goes. But um, I just think that playmaking, but playmakers, running bats, they can go in the later rounds for that. That's why I took the, That's why I think the tackle would be the best bet right now because you got to protect your quarterback. And I guess you got to protect your running back too, right? You know, <laughs> they're probably spending good money into Tony Pollard, so they're probably trying to protect Will Levis, Tony Pollard, all those things. Um, maybe Sneak Vaughn pops up in the mix in Tennessee, considering his vanity. Yeah. Oh man, man, that guy was trash, man. And that's the thing about the draft. When we made that pick, I was kind of a fan. You know, I was like, all right, this pick has potential. He was a former Big Ten running back at U of I. Then he went to Vanderbilt in the SEC. So he's played in some serious college football conferences, and he had big play potential. Well, that's why why you let the draft play out, right? Because uh, we did just that, and he didn't (laughs) pan out too good. But no knock on him. You know, hopefully he's doing well. I know last time I checked, he was in New England. So, uh, And and again, that's that's a guy that, to just to tell you what my draft prowess is, that's a guy I was like, okay, I could see this. I could see him working out here because you saw the big plays that he could make, especially um, when he got over to Vanderbilt. He was, you know, just one play and he could take it to the house. But we never, we never saw that burst in the NFL that you saw in college. And again, it's just one of those things that, like you said, you got to roll the dice and see how it rolls out. Uh, and I can't praise him enough. Jason Light, uh, the guy uh, talent evaluation is something the Bucks have struggled with over the decades. And just to have a, a staff in place right now where we're really hitting on a lot of the picks and Tampa is a homegrown team for the most part um, with, with, with some exceptions as far at um, out of free agency, but I'm really happy with what they've done. And again, that's just one of those examples I see and general managers don't always hit. And there are general managers that are, the opposite of, of what we're seeing here. So, um, again, it's just going to – it remains to be seen what's going to happen. 
Yeah, definitely. J Lo, go ahead. No, time and patience, man. If you watch exactly. Jason Lando, if you watch Jason Lando over the years when he first started here as a general manager, he was signing all these random players with that we thought were gonna be okay. Josh McCown's gonna come in here and change life, which that didn't work out so hot. And then you know, he learned over the years, you know, you go draft these players and you homegrown them with the right coach, you know. And that's why I'm a believer in Jason Light as well. Props to him. Yeah, Jason Light's been marvelous and he's done a lot of good here in Tampa to this point. And I trust him fully with the draft. As Richard says, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Richard. As always, welcome in to the Bucketeers. Speaking of welcoming in, I have the Falcons pick, so I'll just welcome in their pick as well. Dude, favorite team. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll call them the Atlanta Jeans, you know, for. No, don't, don't. <laughs> He's going to get shots fired. I love it. Shots fired. <laughs> no, I wouldn't label that to anyone. Man I down. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Hunt those tiptoeing into the show as well, but in the 2024 NFL, up oh, Huncho got to put you on mute. You sound like a road runner over there, buddy. Um, <laughs> in the 2024 NFL draft, the Atlanta Falcons, led by former Bucks head coach Raheem Morris and former Falcons interim coach Raheem Morris, defensive-minded Raheem Morris selects. Dallas Turner, edge rusher out of Alabama. I think that's the way the Falcons go. Yep. Raheem's a defensive guy. And they restored a lot of that offense this offseason as well. They signed Darnell Mooney. They brought over Rondell Moore in a trade. So between Rondell Moore and Darnell Moody at wide receiver, obviously they have Drake London as well. Tight end, they still got Kyle Pitts. And they signed Charlie Warner over there. They have Cousins and Heineke at the QB position. And their O-line, they made some signings there as well. I could see them going that later. But Raheem Morris, a defensive guy, I got them going Dallas Turner. J-Lo, thoughts on that? Nope. He, I've been mocking him to go to Atlanta most of the time. But because a Dune Day was available, I, you know, it wouldn't hurt to get him. But I think Turner was probably the best option for them. That's who I would have went with. I've been marking him a lot going to Atlanta. And I was thinking about a Dunze, but my thing is if I'm the Falcons, and again, I'm not a dirty bird asshole, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they have, like I said, they traded for Rondell Moore. He's still on his rookie contract. He's young. They gave Darnell Mooney pretty good money. They still have Drake London on his rookie contract. To me, that's a good enough patch-up wide receiver room where – yeah, would Roma Dunze help? Sure. But again, it just goes to show then, well, what, are you paying Darnell Mooney to be wide receiver three or four then in that offense? So, you know, I think they go defensive side of the ball over there. We'll see if Huncho's able to be brought in here in a minute. But Gene, J-Lo and I talked about it briefly. Uh, quick thoughts on your UC or uh, on the UFL. Is your San Antonio Brahmas are off to a blistering start? They're undefeated to start the year. Man, I'm I'm really happy. I'm pleasantly surprised. I, I love the offensive schemes they run and the never never give up attitude that they have. And they've they've exceeded my expectations. I thought they would be good, but I did not expect to see what we're seeing right now. And there are some prospects on the, on that team that I could potentially see, you know, going to camp and trying for a position in the NFL. So Shout out to them and everything they're doing. And Wade Phillips is doing an amazing job where he's at, you know, and I'm, I'm happy with, you know, what he's getting done as well. Yeah, Wade Phillips, what a guy. We talked about him briefly earlier. Upper 70s at this point, but total football yeah. legend is our Jets guy, Huncho. I was just about to bring you in, Hunch, so come on back if you can. Um, <clears throat> man, sounds like Huncho is enjoying himself on this Sunday. I know my man is a church guy so beautiful thing there huncho but join yeah, us back absolutely if, if you can brother join us back if not no worries about it but um if possible join us back um i'm always just bantering about the loudness i don't give a fuck or else I would and, say and guys uh, i'm at my computer now i'm i'm gonna jump off and jump back on my computer so i'll be right back all right we'll see gene mean fighting machine here shortly <laughs> as he's hopping on his computer, the head of the table over there. And while we wait, we might as well go ahead and make the Bears selection, J-Lo, at pick number nine. Is... 
What was that? You're muted. I see wow. you try. What I happened? Can, I already know what the pit's gonna be, but go ahead, go for it. <laughs> Do you know what it's gonna be? But um, our great friend of the programs, Kyle the Juice Machowski, texted into the show. He was gonna make it today. That's actually. Part of the, you know, some guests line up. What can you do? But something fell through for Juice today. Shit happens. He's texting in the show on behalf of ONTAP Sportsnet. Great friend of the programs. The Juice is loose. He's taking with the Bears pick Rome Adunze. And he said he needs to give Caleb every chance to succeed. Adunze runs every route very well and could be the best route runner in this year's draft and he also says arguably the best sleeper receiver in this class as well um maybe not sleeper but maybe under hyped guy and then he did list his three four five as well two three four five as well i should say but we don't have to get to those but j-lo is that where you thought juice would go with the bears pick shocker <laughs> i'm just kidding no i knew he was gonna i knew that was gonna be the pick and I've been mocking him to go to the Bears a few times. You know, I think he could fall to the Bears. And, a, and if he does, that's going to be the pick. There's no way the Bears are going to pass on that. Because he, he is right. You want to give Caleb Williams more weapons on the field. Yeah, because look at the lack of not blaming them necessarily. They might not be great quarterback talents. But they barely gave Trubisky or Fields anything. You want to make sure if you're drafting a third first-round QB in the last you know, six, seven years, J-Lo, you got to make sure that this is a one. Yes, absolutely. You know, you can't go wrong. It'd be a good pick for them to put in that receiving core group along with um, Keenan Allen. That's who they brought in. Keenan yeah. Allen, yes, sir. And then who's the other receiver? They have another one. I can't DJ Moore. Each, oh, yeah, that guy. And they got Cole Komet as well. Cole Komet, but DJ Moore, butt killer. I keep forgetting about that guy. We have, sorry, we're back there momentarily glitch as J-Lo is coming. J-Lo, you back? Can you hear us? Yeah, I couldn't hear you, so I just got back out, jumped back in real quick. Sorry, I'm not sure if that was me or you, but the people have stayed with us, and we're back here on the Bucketeers Live. But, J-Lo, um, if this shakes out in this favor so far, one through nine, you have QBs galore. You have wide receivers galore. This could play out very well in the Bucks' favor in having a premier edge or maybe an O-lineman lasting to where the Bucks want to be if this is how it shakes out. Because to this point, we've had four wide receivers, three quarterbacks, and um, an O-lineman. No, we've had five wide receivers, I believe, three quarterbacks and an O-lineman. Yeah, I mean, it's looking good so far as far as that goes. Um, I think Penix is going to go in the first round. It wouldn't surprise me if he's one of those pits between the Broncos or the Raiders, one of them. I know he definitely won't get past the Broncos if J.J. McCarthy gets taken before. It just depends. But um, I like that. I wouldn't even, I, and Don't sleep on Bo Nitz. He could be another one where, where another team can trade up to get him. And then you got Minnesota as well that needs a quarterback. There's no way they're going to go with Sam Darnold. No way. I mean, you don't think so? What are your percent chances that they start him week one? I'd say about 60, 60 to 65%, depending who they get. If they get J.J. McCarthy, I think that would be something to watch. I think he would fit good with Minnesota, you know, especially in that offensive scheme. I think him and Jetta would kill it. But it just depends, where you know, wherever they get. I mean, if they get Pennants, then I could see Sam Darnold starting. I think Pennants might need a little time before you throw him out there as far yeah, as I that think, goes. I think – Oh! Oh, snap. We got like some that. draft infractions going on here. <laughs> Gene's Man. on the clock. Gene, what beer are you drafting today, sir? Oh, goodness. That's <laughs> <laughs> you got me on the spot. Um give me a chubble. I've been phone. looking, I've been looking at the, the Bears and what they've done. I think they put themselves in a great position. I think they kind of did themselves a disservice getting rid of Caleb Williams. I I got Caleb Jesus, goodness. 
Justin Fields. <laughs> Justin Fields. Sorry, I got Caleb Williams on the brain. Justin Fields. <laughs> I I really believe that you know if they had kept him in place, they've got enough pieces now, and they've done really good with uh, free agency. Um, I think they could go best player on the board, to be honest, and and have somebody that'll be there for a while that uh we, that can go in and start right away. So I can say that just based on looking at their at their roster, but I couldn't tell. I'm not sure who who I would pick. You know, again, I'm the savant when it comes to the draft, but when it comes to this overall team, I could tell you, you know, that. Hey, when it comes to the draft tune, though, you're the head of the table there. That was a fun little uh, draft <laughs> jingle. So hopefully um, the draft jingles can keep coming. But if Huncho joins us, we'll get the Jets pick. But if not, that will – conclude our month-long mock coverage draft for today as we are i think think the jets are in trouble i think think, they're you think so i think their windows closing i'm not 100 percent sold on aaron Rodgers. number one Mm -hmm. um i've never been a huge aaron Rodgers fan i guess and and this is and, and i'm trying to put my biases aside you know because they were division rivals i just i see this guy and i keep hearing all the all the praises people singing his praises but when it gets to the playoffs, he's just like he pulls this disappearing act. And, um, you know, you look at him and he looks frustrated and you're like, OK, next year we've got a lot of stuff in place next year. And next year never came for uh, Green Bay. And I believe Green Bay's defense during that home grin era was what got him to where they to where they were. Uh, I believe that, you know, when he won it, he won. The, the team won. It wasn't he carried this team to a Super Bowl victory. I agree with you, Gene. There were times and points where if you were to say Aaron Rodgers only left Green Bay with one Super Bowl ring, you would have said, you're kidding me. Yeah. You would have said, you're kidding me. What happened? Not only did he only leave with one Super Bowl, he kind of made early exits throughout the rest of his tenure there as well. Mm-hmm. So, Gene, I think you hit the nail on the head. And now, kind of like Drew Brees. Drew Brees yeah. was another one that, you know, they got that win. And I swear to Jesus, excuse me, sorry, no offense, but I really believe that had they not done that onside kick against Indianapolis, I don't see New Orleans winning that game. I think a trick play swung the momentum, and I really believe that uh, Tony and and the Colts would have went on and and, uh, washed them up. But again, it's history. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, and history, that's why we love the game, though. History, moments like that. Grizz says Rodgers can't even beat the Bucks in the playoffs. 40 with the bad Achilles he's done, and the Jets have tried their best. Mm-hmm. They went out and got Mike Williams now to put him with Garrett Wilson over there. Mm-hmm. Um, they signed some O-linemen. They got Brees Hall back there. So it's now or never for Rodgers and the Jets because we all know this, too. As much as we just said on Aaron Rodgers, and this could be a slight on the Jets, He's still their damn best QB they've had in the past, you know, 20, 30 years or so, which is insane because they keep wait, drafting wait. him and keep failing. What about that Chad Panson guy? He wasn't good? Oh, no, no, no. He, <laughs> what, what, what about the Mark Sanchez guy, the one that ran to his lineman and, and had the butt yeah, fumble? Butt fumble, butt fumble guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, they they they're just like they're pretty much they're pretty much going through what we went through for a long time now having a quarterback. You know, I I'm now that you said that you got me thinking. I'm trying to go back through there. I think Fitzpatrick, Ryan Fitzpatrick was the last legit quarterback the Jets had, and mm-hmm. I would argue that with anybody. I would too because you. I, I mean, 2015. Yeah, I think his last year there was probably 15. I would think or yeah. six, you know because then he came to Tampa. In what sixteen or seventeen? I think he got to Tampa. I, I think I think so. Yeah, because then he was a couple of years here, and then you know Fitz Magic bounced. I think he was with the Commandos and team the Miami teams like that. But yeah. you know Fitzpatrick, incredible story there. That was interesting, and yeah, that's definitely the Jets' last legitimate quarterback you would think of. Speaking of legitimate. This is the Bucketeers. We're very legitimate here. Talking all things with the great Gene, with the great J-Lo. Gene, I'm not sure. If you're not up for it today, it's cool. But do you got a hot seat challenge in you? Or not? Um, I'm playing that for the next show, actually. Yeah, awesome. So, I thought- Oh, and, and I did want to say, I know this is we're we're talking football, but UFC was incredible last Yeah, night. yeah. Give us Ooh. your thoughts on that quick. I, 
there were there were some things that happened. I thought the way, and, and I'll start with um, with the Holly Holmes debacle. Um, hopefully, she'll never get another. You know, she'll never be the headliner on a pay per view again, or one of. But man, uh, shout out! That was a really good. That was a really good match, and um, I think this 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 new lady is going to be uh, it's going to be a monster. She's going to be something to deal with in the uh, UFC. I mean, her judo her, her judo is incredible, and her her strike game is pretty legit too. So um, it's gonna. I know it's the first match, but it's going to be interesting. Um, the last match of the night, one second left. Jeez, Louise, oh. I who saw that coming? I mean, those guys were there. They were trading punches, and then lights out. You know, it was uh, again just throughout the night. Um, it was it was fun to watch. I really enjoyed myself. You know, I can honestly say this. Um, I'm pretty I'm a pretty unbiased person. And like when you have when UFC first came out, I was like, I'm a boxing guy. I'm a I'm a boxing purist. I love boxing. But as I'm watching these matches, I'm watching how these guys aren't ducking each other. It's this man is going up against this man. And they're not manufacturing wins because, you know, in boxing styles make fights. And we've seen so many times where this guy is not going to fight this guy because he could potentially lose, but he could fight this guy because his style matches up with the other fighter's style. So that's kind of drawn me away from boxing a lot. And um, I'm, I'm looking at UFC as next man up. Hey, we got to put this fight with this guy, with this guy, and let's let's go. And that's the beauty of the UFC. That's what they, that's what they have going for them over boxing right now. I agree with that. And UFC put on a hell of a show for UFC 300. I watch UFC 100 live growing up. I remember that greatly. UFC 200 was in 2016 and it's great that we're already at UFC 300 and who knows how many hundreds it could get to 400, 500, 600. But I will say kudos to UFC as Gene alluded to took a while for a lot of boxing fans to come around on UFC because like all things, it is different. It's innovative. It's out there. And uh, I think some boxing fans have come around now. Some maybe not still, but UFC taking the world by storm and doing great things for it. Before we get into our salary cap GM game, it's been a while since we played that, but yes. the dra we got the draft edition of that. JLo. <laughs> With the first pick, no. But Jalo, um, how how do you feel about UFC? Oh, it was a great event. I've always been a UFC guy, never into boxing like that. I mean, I'll watch it, but I wouldn't be really into it like that. But UFC, I like a lot. You know, I grew up watching. You know, toward the end of Chuck, um, Chuck Liddell's career, toward the end of his career, and then, you know, of course, John Jones. You know, I just wish he would stay out of trouble because he's a hell of a fighter in the cage. And of course, DC. I like DC. Um, but some of those fights last night were really good, man. I mean, Jim Miller versus Bobby Green, bloodbath. You know, if you keep if you keep track of Jim Miller, I remember watching. He's been in the UFC 100, UFC 200, and now, and now 300. UFC. And the last time he fought in UFC 200, it was a bloodbath. So you gotta like that thing, you know. And then also J Justin Gaethje. I push your buckle. You know he's pretty mad at me right now because I jeans. Yeah, I think he was supposed to be here, but <laughs> he, you made he, him he, go. Uh... He, exactly. He went, <laughs> he went. He went rogue on us, man. He, you know, like I said, you know, I, I mean, no one saw that coming. I mean, Holloway, you know, his camp did a good job getting him ready to fight Gaethje. You know, no one expected that to happen, but you just gotta love that knockout at the end, man. I was just wow, put him to sleep within two. And seconds. that's what makes it exciting, right there. Just events like that just makes it exciting. But, but, I mean, but, hey, at least Alex Correa did his thing, you know. I picked him to win, and he won. You know, he did his thing, not, not that dude out within what, like, in the first round? I mean, like I said, I mean, it's it's very it's very predictable. You, you never know who's going to win. You never know. You know, there was a lot of hell going to be Correa talk, but I didn't see that happening. I thought, you know, Correa does what he does best, knock people out. Yeah, Correa does what he does best. And surely UFC 300 – was a milestone moment for them. I can't wait until the next pay-per-view and so much more. And I'll be at UFC Fight Night St. Louis in about a month from now, Ooh. headlined by um, the big Derek Lewis. He'll be the main event there, so that'll be a lot of fun. I'm a big Derek Lewis guy, obviously, um, getting older, but he's still a fun guy to watch. And I'll be on a bachelor party for that. So, um, Oh, you lucky bastard. 
we'll see if I survive. No, I'm kidding. I'll survive that. But as Gene and JLo both alluded to, awesome stuff from the UFC as it continues to get better and better. And, um, you know, I just sports are great because all this bull crap happens in the world and it's really sad stuff. And, you know, you got world wars going on all over the place. You got a lot of violence taking place. And that's what's the beautiful thing about sports. You could sit back, step back and enjoy the sports world, whatever side of the spectrum of politics you might be on. So kudos to sports for being able to be that place we all escape. Speaking of escape, like Baker Mayfield out of the pocket on a sack, right? Um, <laughs> we got Celery Cap GM game, draft edition. And J-Lo's oh. going to put his Jason Light cap on. Gene's going to put his Mark Dominic cap on. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we got two Jason Lights sitting here. Uh, we got Jason Light Gene edition and Jason Light J-Lo edition. J-Lo, we're going to give you the floor first. You have $8 in your pocket to spend as a GM. You could use it however you want. There's no pulling punches. You could not use it all. I don't know why you'd do that, but um, you can't go over the $8. Here is your pool of players for $8, J-Lo. Ready? One second. Hold on. Let me pull, let me pull up my notepad here. All right. Well, you know, GM is uh, we're going to have to take away a dollar from you for uh, being late. So, <laughs> you know, you, you're suspended a dollar. No, I'm kidding. You still got eight dollars ready to roll you and the young one. She has seven. You have eight. No, I'm kidding. Uh, she's my, I'm, I'm hiring her as my assistant right now. Yeah, she's like Mike Greenberg or John Spytek or Miss Jacqueline in the Bucks front office, you know. Yeah, yeah Miss Jacqueline for sure. But all right, go ahead, Don. I'm ready. So you and your co-partner of $8, J-Lo, you and the little one, to spend. Here's a $4 tier. Marvin Harrison Jr. is $4. Caleb Williams is $4. And Big Man Alt out of Notre Dame is $4. So that's a $4 tier. For $3, and she's shaking her head, no. She doesn't want any of them. She's saying, <laughs> I'm okay with that. $3. You got Drake May. You got Jaden Daniels and you got Malik Neighbors. That's a three dollar tier. Two dollars. You got JJ McCarthy. I'm crying on my bed. <laughs> you got JJ McCarthy. You got Turner, the Edge out of Alabama, and you got Rome Adunze, the wide receiver, for two dollars. And then for one dollar, you got Keon Coleman, Latu from UCLA, and you got J. PJ. So obviously kind of all over the place in terms of positions, money value, but kind of related it to either the top of the top draft prospects or guys that the Bucks may have been rumored to take in round one. So JLo with your eight dollars, once again, four dollars is Marvin Harrison Jr., Caleb Williams, and Alt. Three dollars is May, Daniels, and Neighbors. Two dollars is McCarthy, Turner, and Adunze. One dollar is Coleman Latu and JPJ. General Manager JLo with your eight dollars. Where are you going, sir? Um so as far as that goes, who who, who, who who's um quarterback? I mean, who's the two dollars again? I'm sorry, Tones. No worries, brother. And I'll give mine quick. We'll get back to you. Let me get mine quick with the eight dollars. I'll go ahead and jump in here. This is tough because Man, there's so much good young. Give me Marvin Harrison Jr., though. If I'm a GM out there and I could have a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr. with his elite draft potential, his generational type talent, I'll take Marvin Harrison. That puts me at $4 remaining. Mm. Man, this is tough. Obviously, no more wide receivers, so that rules out a Dunes and those guys. Give me. <sighs> Man, for give me Jaden Daniels to pair with Marvin Harrison Jr. I think that'd be phenomenal. And then give me Latu for a dollar to bolster the defensive side of the ball and to hope he pays off big time as well. So at my eight dollars, I'm going Marvin Harrison Jr. for four, Latu for three, or I'm I'm sorry, Jaden Daniels for three. And Latu for one. So not a lot of depth, but a lot of high-end 
star power there. Gene, if you were to take a stab at this and feel free if you want to or not, yeah. but you got $8. There's a lot of big names on the board. $4, you got Marvin Harrison Jr., Caleb Williams, and Alt, who is the top offensive tackle from Notre Dame. For $3, you got Drake May, Jaden Daniels, and Malik Neighbors, who's the second-ranked wide receiver in the draft. For $2, you got Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy, Turner, who's a top edge rusher, and Rome Adunze. And then for $1, you got Florida State wide receiver Keon Coleman. And then two guys mocked to the Bucks a lot, the edge and Latu and the O-lineman and JPJ. If you were to consume any of that, Gene, who would you take, general manager, Gene? I'm taking Marvin Harrison Jr. and Alt. I'm taking both of them. Wow, I love that. I honestly love that because you got your cornerstone tackle and you got your cornerstone wide receiver. And the and the reason I say that is these are players that you can you can actually build a team. You know, if they if they pan out like we, we hope they will, um, these are two players that you can kind of build, help really build your team up. I mean, be like cornerstones for your team. So as long as you know they stay healthy and produce, I think that would be I don't know, to me, that's probably where I would go. And those are probably the two best all-around players potentially outside the quarterback position in the draft. Those are the two generational talents. So, man, I think you outdid me there, general manager Gene. <laughs> <laughs> I think you came in like a fox and you snuck away with the victory right there. Awesome, <laughs> awesome stuff. Awesome stuff from Gene there. General manager J-Lo, I know you're busy with your depth chart there in your <laughs> war room. Yeah, not that um, do you know? Um. Yes. Um. Give me Latu, and then that's so I'm down to seven, and then and then who are the three dollars again? Was it Drake May? You said Drake May, Jaden Daniels, and Malik Neighbors. Give me Drake May and um Neighbors. All righty, there you go. So you got Drake May, you got Neighbors, you got Latu. And would you rather have Keon Coleman or JPJ? Well, it's probably JPJ since you took neighbors. So we'll give you JPJ with that extra dollar. So I, I was going to say, yeah, give me JPJ for sure. So you kind of see it all differentiate there, right? Gene went with the two generational talents. He went Marvin Harrison Jr. and Alt with his $8, which is good stuff there. Um, I kind of went with a little more spread out, but I went Marvin Harrison Jr., Jaden Daniels, and Latu. With my eight dollars, and then you've seen J Lo open the tool shed with his eight dollars. He goes Latu, Neighbors, JPJ, and Drake May. Uh, Drake May. So there we go. That's some good stuff all around there. I don't think you could go wrong with any of those general manager, um, GM drafts. Speaking of general manager, Jason Light spoke briefly last week with the media. I think he'll probably talk a little bit more, but. Gene, we'll start with you. This guy is a genius, not only drafting, not only selecting, not only building up the depth chart, but, man, smokescreen-wise, he's amazing, and I think he's diverting a lot of people yet again. Yeah, definitely. Um, I would look at the last few picks and, and say uh, these are these are players that nobody really had the Bucks really looking at, and I think – when you look at how Jason Light drafts, he drafts in a vacuum. And basically, he's either going to hit or he's not going to hit. And then if he doesn't hit, he's going to move on pretty quickly if he doesn't see, uh, you know, a future in it. So uh, he's just one of those – he's one of those uh, GMs. I just don't even try to guess anymore because he could try to trade up and, and do something that nobody's really thinking about. Um, well, I'll give you a good example. Uh, when O.J. Howard was drafted – O.J. Howard was originally projected around and as a top 10 type player or, you know, at that time. And uh, nobody, nobody really like went in and did any film study on him or, you know, put out any videos on him. Like even real bucks talk, they were like, this guy is so high. We're not going to touch him. You know, we'll just kind of look for who would be available at number 19. And, uh, you know, when it all, when it all kind of shook out, you saw that that's the, that was the player that Jason Light went after. Uh, Kalijah Kansi is another example. Um, I can promise you nobody had Kalijah Kansi on their, on their bingo card, you know, last year, you know, going into the draft. So these are, these are examples. These are kind of examples I'm talking about. They, they know, I mean, he's lockstep with, um, with Todd Bowles right now on what they want to do. 
And, you know, with the new offensive coordinator, I'm sure that they're, they're working all this in and uh, they're all on the same page when they make these draft picks. And it may be players that none of us are even looking at or thinking about, but these guys that these are guys that they see something in them from film study and they say, Hey, we could, we could implement that in our offense or our defense or special teams or whatever. So um, again, I just kind of gave up on trying to guess what they're going to do. And I'm just going to wait and see what they, yeah, exactly. Uh, Yaya Diaby, whoever Bucks, Bucks raised bolts is right. Nobody, nobody saw Yaya Diaby as a, as a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. So these are the kind of examples that, that we have here. And um, it makes it more exciting because you're not dealing with an incompetent general manager. You're dealing with a general manager that knows what he's doing. And as a fan, this is what makes the draft fun because you know, you have somebody that could high potentially come in and help this team get better. And, you know, I remember last year, not sure exactly, but JLo, I believe either me, you stun it. One of us, I want to say me, maybe you two, but one or two of us had, not in round three, though. I think in round four or five, I might have had Diaby somehow get into the Bucks, And then one of us mocked Payton Durham to the Bucks as well, I believe. Those were the two we hit the nail on the head on. I don't think we hit any. I think we maybe. maybe Jose Ramirez. Yeah, Jose Ramirez and Cody Mock. Those are our four. I don't think we had Trey Palmer. I don't think we had Kalijah Kansi. Um and I don't think we had Cervace Dennis either. But I think the other ones oh, and we didn't have Josh Hayes. But everybody else we did have Jose Ramirez. We did have Cody Mock. Maybe not the round right, but to Gene's point, you know, you can't even guess the round or selection or position. Um, but it's smokescreen season, and I think Jason Light produced more smokescreens last week, J-Lo. Before we get to our final words, what say you? Yeah, you, you never know. I mean, and but that's what makes it more exciting. When you draft a player you don't know. To feed off but, Gene's point, yep. And, 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 you know, and some of us go into nerd mode and go through the highlights, you know, even looking, you know, to how they, you know, how they did in college and all that stuff. But as me as a draft person – Tones already knows, and I'm pretty sure you know too, Gene, that I love doing mocks. I love looking into these random players that, you know, no one really looked into, you know. For example, um, J.C. Allen put in um, Isaiah Davis, that running back. I, I think so. I can't mm-hmm. remember his name right now at the moment, top of my head. But anyway, small school guy, he would be a fun pick. Mason McCormick is another one I really like at guard, which I think a lot of Buck fans are liking as well. He could be the small school guy that Jason Light goes after in the second or third round. So it'll be interesting. If we get him in the second, I'm, I'm totally okay with it. I trust Jason Light. I like what he talked about in the press conference, you know, keeping us all guessing on our feet. You never know. And he's gotten better, you know, or at night, if he has one bad draft, he counters real quickly and puts the same position, just adds another depth piece in there. You know, Kalaja can see, I was surprised he landed to us. And but I didn't think we were gonna take him. I kept thinking, uh, maybe we'll go a different direction. And that's when you know, <laughs> which Kalaja can't see. I'm like, all right, bet. You know, you can't go wrong really good with pick it. at the end of the day when you look back at it, especially. And like you said, J Lo, one of those things where might be surprising, but I'm gonna get on board with it. You know, regardless of who it is, I'm not gonna hold grudges. I always try and hype up our draft picks. I love it. Some fans hate it. I love it, man. You got to get excited. I don't care what college they get to. I don't care their background, how they came up in life. You know, I'm excited for all the youngins we add to the team. Speaking of youngins, one week from Tuesday, Tuesday night, we as Bud Cannibalist joins JPJ all aboard the JPJ train. He could be a buck. He was in our GM salary cap game for the dollar price tag. He could very much so be a buck, whether we stay put or trade back. JPJ could be a buck, but if you guys want to see our Bucks mocks, where we actually all do a little mock and bring it to the table and go over it and then end with our Grand Bucks mock, one week from Tuesday night, two nights before the NFL draft, we will be bringing you our Bucks mocks. That will be, I believe, the 23rd of April, I believe. I want to My say. birthday! Wow! If you can make it great, JLo, if not, you could submit them in, obviously. So, um, I know you'll be a busy man that day. And then um, we might have some Gene and J-Lo uh, solo action next weekend as I have a wedding in Mexico. But we'll talk about that off scenes and whatnot. But dun, dun, you, guys, dun. 
you guys might get more JLo and Gene led Bucketeers shows. So Bucks raise bolts. Be shocked. FSU wide receiver comes Bucks. Sure, maybe Keon Coleman, I think you're alluding to, but that's the beauty of the draft. You never really know. Speaking of beauties, it's a Sunday. It's a beautiful day out in Chicago and Tampa. I'm assuming in Arizona as well. Mr. Gene, thank you for coming on at least half the time. You didn't have to do that, brother. And uh, any final words for the program as we're kind of getting into draft mode? And uh, we'll talk off air as well. But hey, I you will- know, uh, I think the fans just need to get excited, man. This is going to be this is going to be a good draft. I, I think they're this is a draft that's going to really help the Bucks if they make right if they make the right picks. Um, I think it's going to keep them competitive in the NFC South uh, with everybody raising their levels. Um, you know, it's it's just going to be uh, a better division and um, a lot of a lot of surprises out there. But as usual, everybody is overlooking the Bucks, and I'm good with that. So. Uh, let us fly under the radar, get some wins, and um, you know, possibly get back to the uh, NFC South again. So um, I'm excited. Everybody should be excited. Just putting us closer to football's kicking off, and um, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it as well. And either tomorrow or Tuesday night, probably tomorrow night, we're going to try and get back on Mondays. But we'll also be back with our next Bucketeers month-long mock coverage with the Jets. I think the Vikings picking there, the Colts picking there. Joey Nips from Cleve and me will be joining to make the Colts selection, and yeah. we hope to get more fun guests on as well. But Gene's absolutely right. Exciting time to be a Bucks fan. And jump aboard now or in a month, but whatever it might be, jump on board. You don't want to miss the crew. J-Lo, any final words for the show? It's been another fun one. I know Juice wasn't here in person, but he was here in text. I love having these draft shows. Oh yeah, absolutely. My apologies for my <laughs> my assistant needing my my attention, but for the most part, you know, it's always good talking about football with your guys. You know, you're, you're my brothers, and just can't wait to do more 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 to come, man. In the meantime, enjoy Sunday, watching some UFL. The Brahmins are gonna get their first L today by my Battle Hawks Kakaka Gene, <laughs> and <laughs> and then. Plus, hopefully the Rays will get back on track. But for the most part, enjoy your Sunday, fellas. Yeah, enjoy your Sundays, fellas. Um, it's always a beautiful thing to talk Bucks football with my brothers, Gene, J-Lo. Huncho is in, then Huncho is out. I hope my man's okay. But regardless, we'll count him as in for this show. He was in the room, damn it. And yeah, I heard he was. Him, and I heard him um, in some capacity, him or maybe Lightning McQueen regardless whatever it might be <laughs> bud it, bud's always active light has gotten me more excited about the draft love my bucks and bud thank you for the twitter follow i just followed you back as well sir so awesome stuff there but the great gene and j-lo and the millions and millions and millions and the littlest <laughs> one the head of the table is in j-lo's lap right now i'm just part <laughs> of the bloodline you know i'm just enjoying it or we could go by um the dark order you know we could go by a couple of things so go bucks whether you refer us as, refer to us as the dark order or the bloodline or ftr we're on top <laughs> of it and gene knows that jlo knows that i know that we love talking bucks football with all you guys thanks so much to bud bucks Rays, bolts olivia and the rest of the crew for commenting in today gene and jlo tones decker off here three two one touchdown Kate out and over the middle. Hope both of you brothers enjoy your Sundays, guys. All right. All right, guys. God bless. See y'all soon. Get that UFL coverage in, fellas. I know we will. Um, adios, everybody. It's been tremendous here on the Bucketeers. Thanks again for tuning in. Sunday, man. You, I know you're nervous for the Rams, but you got to be a little enthusiastic after being there. Bro, that, that game atmosphere was ridiculous. The energy, the electricity. That place was rocking anyone up there. And a lot of the, a lot of the uh, Super Buck fans were there, too. Uh, Eat Buck.
Tampa Tones. We are joined by Lee Goon tonight, uh, host of the Pat and Aaron Show of WDAE. Uh, Pat Donovan. And it sounds like Stunna is bumbling a little bit. Going to put him on mute for a second until that gets a little clear. But we're joined by Pat It looks Donovan. like Stunna is hanging out with Cheech and Chong in a car with the windows up or something over there. <laughs> it does look like we got a little... No, my, my uh, camera's broke. 